Hi, this is Jacob Youngblood with NCD.io. Today I'm going to be showing you how to parse FFT data directly on Node-RED. So the reason you might want to do this is, for instance, if you have a cloud provider that doesn't allow server-side parsing, or you want to do direct database injections from Node-RED. We're going to be focusing on using the Enterprise Gateway to do this. You can do this from any operating system running Node-RED. Um, there will be some differences in the instructions, and I will point those out when we get to them. So the first thing you want to do is pull up your Node-RED interface. Um, and you want to make sure that your wireless gateway says ready. Once you've confirmed that, you will want to open up a new tab and go to GitHub and pull up this flow, Node-RED Flow FFT Analysis. Once you're here, you will see a README here. Uh, this will have instructions for setting this up outside of using the Enterprise Gateway. For the Enterprise Gateway, I have set up a secondary flow that does a lot of this setup for you. So once we're here, we will open this JSON file. And you can either download or select raw and copy and paste like I will do. Go back to Node-RED, go to the menu, import, paste, select new flow, and import. So now you'll see we imported two flows and 17 nodes. We will go ahead and disable this default flow. Go over to the type 80 flow. You'll see we have some red triangles here. That means these are not configured properly. So first we will need to assign a serial port to them. The default serial port for the Enterprise Gateway will be this slash dev slash TTY MXC2. Hit done. It'll go into the Gateway and do the same thing. Hit done. And while we're here, I will show you some of the important aspects of the vibration sensors when it comes to getting the time series data that we're going to be parsing into FFT. Um, so the most important one is the serial device. If we don't have that selected, we won't get any data. Um, the next will be the sensor type. Depending on what you choose, um, it will need to match the sensor that you have. For instance, I'm using a one-channel vibration for this tutorial. At the same flow will work with the two-channel vibration, and the condition-based predictive maintenance sensor has a vibration analysis on it as well, and the type 84 will. So, once you've selected your sensor type, you can go and find auto config. Auto config means that when this device is in either program mode or fly mode that we want to configure it. Um, OTF config is slightly different. It relates to fly mode in particular. So fly mode is on the fly configuration. That means there's no physical manipulation of the sensor required to get it to change the configurations. If you select this once an hour, the sensor will check in to see if Node-RED has any updates to the configurations. And if it does, it will send the configuration commands to that sensor without you having to press the reset configuration buttons like you would uh, for manual configuration. Here, I always recommend setting this wait for network formation to enabled. What this does is when the sensors boot up after the sleep cycle, um, this gives them some time to form that self-forming mesh network that DigiMesh uses and it will increase the reliability of the configuration commands. So for destination address, this is another important one specifically for vibration sensors. How they operate is when they are sending time series data, they send large bursts of individual packets. Setting that destination address increases the reliability of getting those packets on Node-RED substantially. So I always like to set this to the serial address of the receiver. So the best way to find that is to go back into your flow. We'll go ahead and hit deploy. It will come up any time that you either redeploy the flow or put the gateway into configuration mode or take it out. So we can go in here, we see we have a message with the topic of modem MAC. We want the last eight characters here. We will copy them, go over here, 
find our destination address and paste. Then we will remove these colons. The next important step is the node ID and delay. Um, the node ID actually sets an increment um, after taking the readings on the sensor before it transmits them. The goal behind this is to offset packet bursts that it sends when it reads time series data so that the node ID will be used to put in a delay. So for instance, you could have four sensors, each with a different node ID. They would offset from each other when they send those packet bursts uh, to improve the reliability of receiving that data. Um, for this, we only have one device. We're going to set it to zero. If we had three devices, I would recommend setting it to zero, one, two. Um, the delay is not used here. This is a generic configuration. The vibration sensors actually use a secondary setting here to determine how often they should be sending their vibration data. So we go down a little bit further, and we should always set this delay to zero on vibration sensors. So here's another one, mode. For this demonstration, we're going to be using raw. The other way to get time series data is to use process plus raw on demand. This is used when you want to get um, process data, which will be the RMS, min, max, and peak frequencies detected for each axis um, without having to worry about those large packet bursts. Uh, raw is used every time the sensor boots up, it will send the time series data, and processed is every time the sensor boots up, it will always send that process data. So we'll be using raw for this. Sampling duration, so this is 10, it equates to 500 milliseconds. So we'll be sampling the vibration data for about half a second. Here is where you determine how often the device sends its data. We aren't going to check that at this time. Um, here you can set the real-time clock. The real-time clock sets a value on the vibration sensor that gets passed along with the vibration data. So that way you can correlate it to a specific time. The output data rate here we're setting to 25,600. That's 25,600 times per second the sensor is going to sample that vibration data. And since we're doing it for one half a second, um, that's how you determine how many total samples you receive. Right, those are the bulk of them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hit done and deploy. Now I'm going to go into the setup gateway node. And what this flow does is it changes all of the settings necessary to call in external libraries into function nodes on node red. So what this one does is change the settings.js file to include a library called FFT-JS, which we're going to be using to parse the FFT data. Go ahead and click that. Uh, what this one does is it installs the FFT-JS library we're going to be using. We'll wait for that to complete. All right, it's completed. And what this one does is restarts Node-RED on the Enterprise Gateway. So you'll see we'll lose connectivity to the server here. And you can see the commands actually used here if you need to do this on a different operating system, or again, they're outlined in that um, GitHub README file. On the Enterprise Gateway, we're using a library called PM2, which acts as a daemon moderator to allow Node-RED to run as a service. That's why we're using the command PM2 restart all. So we'll go back over to the Type 80. Our Enterprise Gateway is set up correctly now. All we need to do is turn on the sensor. So because we have OTF configured, we won't have to manually put the sensor into configuration mode. When it boots up, it will send a fly message, which will trigger on-the-fly configuration. You 
And here you can see that we are getting a lot of acknowledgments. And finally, we get this config results. Let's go ahead and open that and make sure everything went through correctly. So anytime that you have a command here and it says true, that means the command went through correctly. Um, these established config network commands, those will never return true. They're expected to return this object. That is due to the nature of how those commands work. Well, it looks like we received data. So let's take a look. So this is from debug 27, which is before our FFT converter. Let's take a look at what we have. Go into the payload. And here we can say that we have a sensor type 80. Check the battery percents. And we can go into sensor data. We have a time ID. This is based off of the onboard clock of the enterprise gateway or the clock of your computer that's running node red. So this is 2234. Here is the address of the sensor. We have the number of axes enabled, full scale range ODR, which we set to 25,600. And inside of data, we will have a large amount of readings. Each one of these readings is broken up into X, Y, Z. You can see we have thousands. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down so we can take a look at the FFT data we parsed. So we can see this debug 31. This is after the FFT converter, so we should see our FFT data here. We'll open it up, go into the payload, and we have a new object here called FFT underscore data. Let's open that up. These are the frequency offsets. In here we have the data for the x-axis. These are the real numbers and the imaginary numbers here. We have the magnitude listed here. And we've also broken up the real and imaginary into their own separate objects and arrays just to make it easier to manipulate if you only want one or the other or need to treat them separately. And we do the same for the Y and the z-axis. So at this point you have FFT data going into node red. You know, if you want to send this off to a server, you could use something like an HTTP request for a REST API. You can use MQTT if you need to send it out over an MQTT broker. Or if you want to do direct database injections, there are additional modules you can install for uh, things like Aurora or Cosmos DB. If you maintain your own database, you can install nodes for MySQL, SQL, MongoDB. It's really up to you at that point. So yeah, this is the guide on how to get FFT data into Node-RED. If you guys have any questions, suggestions, or general responses, let me know. Thank you.